a church either. Now that I'm freed up, I want Fridays and Saturdays off. Why have more than Fridays and Saturdays off? I spent five hours a day for almost three months in the Bible. When we first started meeting, we used to meet at Denny's on um, uh, 128th every Thursday night after we get off work. And he would take my Bible and he'd be like, dude, you need to work this. There's nothing in here. Now, there is so much in here. And I look at this and it's like, well, I remember this. I remember when, where I was at with God at that moment. You know, so all of these markings, everything in here is a blessing because it brings me back to where I was and I don't forget where I came from. Um, after, after a while, we kind of just broke away from that, but I got to the point where I had got down on my knees and I prayed to God. I said, Lord, here I am. You say, come to me as you are and not as you ought to be. I come to you as I am. Now, I was doing a lot of things that I shouldn't have been doing. I was smoking, chewing, drinking, and doing marijuana. So I got to the point where I knew I cannot be doing this anymore. And I knew that I wanted to get into a church, and I knew that I wanted to be rebaptized. Because my first baptism was on a Navy ship when I was in the Navy on Sunday morning on Easter and we turned the belt upside down and they filled it with water and I got baptized through sprinkling. Then I found out what the bell really means and I said, oh, no, 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 no. I have got to redo this. So in preparation to doing this, I got down on my knees and I said, Lord, here's, I, I, I had all the, everything that I was smoking to get bad stuff with and I put that there. I went and I grabbed all my, the six pack of beer I had in there, I dumped it down the sink and I brought the six pack in there. I took the cigarettes, I broke them in half, threw them away, and I brought the empty pack of cigarettes and the lighter and put it down the floor in front of me. And then the chew, well that took me a little bit. So uh, at the time I wasn't chewing, but I reverted back to it about a, a couple months later. I don't know why I did that, because I would, he liberated me from the cigarettes, but I still had that trapping. So I laid that out, and I said, Lord, please take this from me. Instantaneously, I cannot even explain how miraculous this was. I didn't have no craving for cigarettes anymore. I didn't, I didn't smoke weed anymore. It was done, just like that. The alcohol, had, I don't even taste or crave alcohol anymore. It was that easy. Because I've, I learned that Christ says, my yoke is light. And if I do my part, he right there been wanting to do his part the whole time. Amen. So finally, I did my part. Unfortunately, a couple months later, as we were still meeting at Denny's, even in my off time, after I was unemployed, I had some chewing and we were walking out and he's like, dude, you need to get rid of that. And I was like, ah, oh, I know. So I took it and I hucked it, and threw it away in the woods. Two months later, it crept back on me again. Finally, and it wasn't until after I got married, I told myself, Lord, I, I, I went back on this. And this is after two years already in the church. And every day, every time I go by a can, it's like, nope, you know you're doing wrong. That Holy Spirit was just on me. And I told myself, you know what? There's going to be a day where you're going to do this so much that it's going to become familiar again, and you're not going to care about the Holy Spirit pricking your heart, trying to get your attention. And I knew that one day that I was going to go put down that money to buy that can. And that could have been the last time that God gave me. I don't know. What if I had died the next day? Ugh, that killed me. So I finally I said, Lord, what do I need to do to get this away from me and then I was in the shower and it just came to me and it said you need to confess to your wife you need to confess in public to your wife because I've been keeping it secret from her and she smelt it on me from time to time and I lied and I just felt so bad about that I had to come clean in front of God and in front of my wife so I confessed it to her I sat her down I told her look I've been lying to you about some things and this is what I've been lying to you about. And I put the can right in front of her and I didn't empty it out. Or I dumped it down the toilet. And I said, Lord, today's the day, right now, right now. I got this. Thank you for your strength. And I dumped it down the toilet and I went straight into her and I said, look, here's the deal. And I laid it out. And ever since then, that craving left. 
And the, the feeling of relief that came off my shoulders that day, I can't even explain it. So now I know that I don't have no more worldly sins that I need to be worried about. I gotten rid of all the vices in my life. The only thing that will get me now is my mouth, my actions, or my thoughts. This is my struggle right now. And as each and every one of you know, the greatest battle in history is the battle within. And I'm so, you know, I'm so blessed to have Jesus still in my life that he is my Lord and Savior. I have the Holy Spirit with me everywhere I go, even when I'm at work in the most secular place that I've ever worked in. So back up a little bit. As I was on my knees praying for a church, I get a phone call two days later, and it was Brett. He says, hey, what are you doing Friday? And I said, um, nothing. <laughs> I don't have a job. And he goes, I'm going to take you and meet a pastor. And I said, okay, what church? And he goes, the Seventh-day Adventist church. Well, I'd already known he was Seventh-day Adventist, and I already knew a little bit about it, and I was okay with it because everything he was telling me that was present truth, he would give me the Bible verses. I would go home, pray about it, read the Bible verses, and sure enough, it was truth. And I said, this is, this is what I want. When I was in the Baptist church, there was something about that religion that I couldn't put my finger on. I just didn't. It didn't sit right with me. Even when I was in the Navy and I was previously married, I tried going to church every Sunday, the Baptist church down the road. Something still was not there. I just didn't know what it was. Well, I know what it was. It was uh, I was keeping Sunday and not Saturday. Once I started keeping Saturday and started going to church on Saturday and started sitting down with the pastor to start studying for my baptism every Friday, without fail, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I started realizing this is what it was. God had moved me into the church that he, I had prayed for. And that was the Marysville Adventist Church. And I was there for about a year and a half. So through that whole year, God take, took care of me. Uh, the pastor offered me a job mowing the lawns for the church there and the church in Arlington. So I did that. And I paid $200 each church. But I told him, I said, you know what? God's blessed me. I want to bless back and bless the church back. You don't have to pay me all this money. You know, I can get by on $100. He says, no, this is God rewarding you for serving him. Okay. So I, I, can't, I can't argue with that. And it helped out great. So then I got to the point where, okay, I've been lonely now for 22 years almost before, since my last marriage. And I, thought, I said, okay, Lord, if you feel that I am ready... I would like a godly woman. I want a woman that's a Seventh-day Adventist, somebody that I can share this faith with, walk with you, and grow together with her towards you. A week later, I'm in Sabbath school, <laughs> doing the Sabbath school lessons in the back, sitting in the back pew, and then Regina walks in. And I had seen her, you know, a couple times before that, and this was um, in November of 2014. I'd just gotten baptized uh, November 8th. So shortly after that, I prayed for a wife, and then Regina walks in, and I, we've seen her, and then uh, we started a little bit of correspondence. She called me for some Bible study, and then my phone, I lost minutes on my phone, so I didn't have a phone for about three months. And then Brother Brett stepped up and helped me out with that. So then we started keeping communication again, and then Regina showed up in the church, and I said, oh, hey, how's it going? So God was an started answering my prayers immediately. She, a week before I prayed, she had prayed for a godly man, a man that was a Seventh-day Adventist. So God was bringing us both together. I didn't know it. She probably knew it, but I didn't. The next, the next Sabbath, she comes in. She goes, are you still looking for a job? I said, yes. And she goes, would you like to get trained in health care and become a home care aide? And I was like, yes, that would be, you know, I think that would be awesome. That's a calling for God, and I can serve God that way and help, help out my elder brothers and sisters that way. So I did. I did my 72 hours, went over to house number three where she worked, where she still works now, um, got to meet the owners, got to meet some of the residents and stuff, and I just really felt, you know what, this is right, this is what I want to do. But before that happened, also, I was with pa Pastor Doug from the Marysville Church, and we were going and doing um, outreach with one of the elders in our church. She was no longer to come, come, come to church and visit. So we would go, and we would go and visit her and help her out and get her car started and this and that. And I told the pastor, I said, look, helping out 
older folks, it feels right. It feels good. And I would love to be in a capacity. So, boom, there it was. I was like, you know what, Pastor, you remember when you and I were talking about this? I just got blessed with this. And so um, we started talking and getting to know each other, and then a courtship started. So not even five, five months later, we got married in the church, the same church that we met in, got, re- got married there. Um, that uh, was on her birthday is our anniversary. So God took, took me from my mom's death, took me out of the pit, took the drugs and the alcohol away from me, the cigarettes, the tobacco, um, gave me a new friends list, gave me understanding in the Bible, still in the Bible, taught me how to pray and become a prayer warrior. As uh, I was in the military for 10 years in the United States Navy, and I took an oath, so I was always had this mentality of once you've taken the oath, you're an oath keeper. You still have to, a moral obligation as an oath keeper to defend this country if you are called to do so. But then I started reading, and God started teaching me, you know what, that oath is null and void. You are my soldier now, and my soldiers are peaceful. They don't bear arms. They don't go out and kill people. They don't invade other people's homelands. You are a peacemaker, and you are a witness on my behalf. So today I stand before you as a witness on his behalf and testify, yes, God works wonders in your life. And it's not only once. It's not the, the saying they kill two birds with one stone. It's, it's along those lines, but it's not that. God will take five, six, ten things at once and snap his fingers and, and say it into existence, and it will happen for you. I can't say enough about God. One other thing that I, I found that he brought me to in the Desire of Ages, it's in this version of the book. I don't know if you guys have this, so I know there's different copies out there, so the pages are different. But in this book, um, if we go to the chapter, The Touch of Faith, and it's um, on my page, it's 360. And it starts, one of the, the paragraphs starts, our confession of his faithfulness. Now, just, I just want to read that because I, I really find comfort in these words. Another blessing for my life is that he has raised up a prophet for us to interpret a lot of things in the Bible that sometimes it's hard for us to understand or comprehend. He has given this to Sister White already so that we can go and reference Sister White and then we are blessed because we have understanding and his wisdom. So the touch of faith, page 360, it says, Our confession of his faithfulness is heaven's chosen agency for revealing Christ to the world. We are to acknowledge his grace as made known through the holy men of old. But that which we will be most effective or effectual is the testimony of our own experience. We are witnesses for God as we reveal in ourselves the working of power of a power that is divine. Every individual has a life distinct from all others and an experience differing essentially from theirs. God desires that our praise shall ascend to him marked by our own individuality. These precious acknowledgments to the praise of the glory of his grace when supported by a Christ-like life have an irresistible power that works for the salvation of souls. That is, that, that's, wonderful to, to, for my ears to hear and for my eyes to read. And I just praise God for all the many little blessings that he's bestowed in my life, brought Regina and I together, and the miracles he's working in our married life as we walk together in one and work for, and walk towards him. So I thank you, thank you, church, for giving me the time. All right, thank you, Tim. You know, as I, as I listen to both testimonies, if anybody asks you if God is real, look at changed lives. Changed lives proves that God is real. And then there, there was one connection I see with the two of them. It, it's, the, it's the Bible, right? The, the two of them, the, the more they, they dig into, the more they understand it, the, the more their, their lives change. And, and it's just... It's just incredible to me. I'm going to turn this on first. I'm going to leave you with this. What kind of personal testimony do you have 
that tells what the Lord has done for you. You know, I want to thank Jonita. I asked her to step up this morning and give a testimony. And, and she said yes. I asked Lori. She said yes. I asked Tim. He said yes. And I want to put this out there to you, that if I come to you and ask you to share your testimony, yes, pray on it, but say yes. Whenever given the opportunity to share your faith and share what God has done for you, say yes. Do it. Because as we walk and as we live for Christ, share it with others. Because you don't know how your testimony is going to touch the lives of other people. Why don't we have the choristers come up here and we'll sing our closing hymn.